Lunty coming at you from deep within the bowels of IEM Sydney, the biggest esports event in Australia. $250,000 worth of prize money for the CSGO tournament. The best teams in the world competing. Incredible crowd, hyper and excitable, and everyone's screaming and cheering and enthralled with the action of the CSGO competition. Except me. Ah, uh, gotta be honest with you, I don't care that much about CSGO. I'm here to check out the toys. Now don't get me wrong, I dig that Intel are pushing, powering and supporting esports within the glorious shores of Aussieland, making esports ever more mainstream, accessible and growing the community. And in their own words, Intel is catalyzing the growth of esports in Australia through IEM. It's just that when it comes to where I spend my time at events like this, the gravitational pull of the new tech and the builders and modders it's difficult for me to escape it. And of course, with the launch of the new generation of i7s and i9 CPUs, with their new boosted core counts and Intel's newest dance moves inside, everywhere you turned inside and outside of the main arena, there they were, churning away with their new promises of even more game-chewing power. For the CPU to have room to breathe for encoding and churning out streams and such without sacrificing essential game performance, because more and more of us these days are enjoying the community aspect of streaming our gameplay. And while the i7 will give you the absolute best in game performance, the i9, well, that's where you want to live if you're like me, and you stream video games, and you record video games, and you make content about video games, and anything else around them, really. But in one of the side rooms, on display, was a newly released into early access, and my new personal favorite rhythm game ever, Beat Saber. Intel told me this was going to be at the event, what they didn't tell me when they invited me was they had brought the game's developer down. So stay tuned for that interview. But Beat Saber wasn't just there because of its crazy viral pre-launch hype, but it provided a shining, completely joy-filled opportunity for Intel to be showing off not just VR and convincing ever more people that VR is awesome fun and getting people into a headset is nearly essential to really sell that idea because a lot of people make assumptions about what VR is like based on short, comparatively clumsy VR experiences with those clip-in mobile phone-based headsets, but real, full-powered PC-based VR is literally a whole new world, and sometimes it just takes getting your head into one of those headsets to realize that. But Intel were also shining a light on their new Hades Canyon based Nook, which is an improbably small mini PC, which isn't that rare these days. What makes these new Intel Nooks truly special though, and in fact utterly unique right now, is its power. Inside is an 8th generation Core i7 CPU perfectly married to an AMD RX Vega M GH graphics chipset, which, by the way, makes it a VR-capable PC, and one that you can slide into your back pocket. Your pocket size may vary, but you know what I mean. And it's not just the power, it's the I.O. Unlike most mini PCs, the Intel Nook here is practically festooned with connection options, including two M.2 slots for SATA 3 or PCIe NVMe solid state drives, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, two LAN ports, two mini display ports, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, front and rear HDMI 2.0A ports, and seven USB ports. It's insanity. Clearly, somewhere inside Intel's presumably big blue building, in a windowless climate-controlled room, there sits a small team of what can only be maniacal geniuses cackling to themselves as they come up with this crazy stuff. I gotta be honest with you here, guys. I would have tried to pinch one, but it seemed like poor manners since Intel did invite me here. Oh, that's fun! Elsewhere, though, the other end of things. The place for people to explore the DIY route. Building, nay, crafting their own bespoke PC rig to perfectly suit their needs. Each component carefully selected assembled by hand and shaped into the precise monster required. PC gaming can be an intimidating thing. There are so many components, confusing compatibilities, things like that, but it is actually simpler than you might give it credit for. Once you sort of get the basic level of knowledge, and I've made videos about this before, but once you get the basic level of knowledge, things do really fit together. Like Lego is the usual quote, just go together by Lego. It's hard to put things in the wrong way around. And we've got uh, booths here on the show floor which are leading people through the process of building their own PC to show them how simple it is, to give them a grounding in the basic components, how things fit together and why you would pick certain components. Then they've got the Pimp My PC booth which is the next stage up. You've got your basic PC, now you want it to make it yours. you got to pimp it out, you got to pimp it up. Pimp it out, pimp it up. 
Which is the less offensive one here if we're going for metaphors about pimping? Uh, philosophical or linguistic debates about the metaphorical vernacular of pimping aside, there is just one more final stage of true and gloriously hopeless PC building addiction. And that's the moment when it turns from a craft into an art form. And that, gentle viewer, is called modding. have to calm down. I'm overexcited. I need a Red Bull. I need a big glass of water. No, actually what I need is a beer. Of course, I do want to take another moment to thank Intel for bringing me here and letting me bring this stuff to you. It has been quite a lot of fun. I really need that beer now. Thanks for watching. I'm Blanty. I'll catch you next time. Beers! <laughs>